and we're back, one and all, to wrap up another 15mm war game on the SITREP Podcast channel. As part of our ongoing 30th anniversary review of Desert Storm, we've set up and run this tabletop game depicting the Battle of Kuwait International Airport. Part 1 of this game has been posted previously, check for a link in the description of this video. And now we're back to finish it up. So this battle was fought by 1st and 2nd Marine Divisions, supported by Army Tanks and Artillery of Tiger Brigade, 2nd U.S. Armored. The Iraqis defending the airport were matched together from the remnants of at least 10 different divisions. This was the last full day of the war, 27 February 1991, and by now the Iraqis were really on their last legs. Nevertheless, the Marines have to take this objective quickly while sustaining minimum casualties and inflicting the least possible collateral damage. The system we're using is Battlegroup, originally by Iron Fist Publishing, modified of course to accommodate 1991 weapons and equipment. So like I was saying, this battle is already well underway, and believe it or not, the Marines are in kind of a tough spot uh, at more than one place on this table. We see where an LAV-25 has already been hit in the side and set on fire by an RPG-7, and that lead Marine M60 battle tank has been hit and immobilized by an AT-3 Sagger anti-tank guided missile. The good news for the Marines is that, you know, for all their losses, the Iraqis have taken three, if not four times as many losses in the same period. Marine off war artillery has been a huge help, not only with uh, dual purpose improved conventional munitions, but also Copperhead anti tank guided weapons, the artillery delivered or anti tank missiles. Marine infantry, like we see here, has been very, very helpful in spotting those targets and suppressing Iraqi artillery and anti tank missile sites. We also have these uh, mortars that have done really great work so far today. So now for a quick word about our battle rate encounters. Okay, so one thing that I've noticed as I've run more and more of these uh, Kuwait and Iraq Gulf War games is that I've been setting the battle rating limits way too low. Um, of course, in official battle group, you're going to have all kinds of lists in your campaign books that go into a great amount of detail. How many battle rating points each type of unit that you add to your list, how many battle rating points that adds to your limit, and so on. Um, of course, I don't have those books for a 1991 sort of unofficial modern expansion here. So, the normal rule of thumb is count up the total number of units you have in your force, multiply by 2.5. Um, that should have given the Iraqis at least, I started off with 50, you should have given them at least 65 or so. So, I've cranked them up to 65, and correspondingly, I've given the Marines an extra 5 points, uh, cranking them up to 25. Now again, the Marines have a, a much smaller battle rating, that's to reflect their much tougher victory conditions. Okay, so we're going to start off Marine Turn 3 by rolling for some orders. We're going to roll 3d6 for a company-sized game. That's not too bad of a result right there, especially when you consider I have 5 officers to my force. So it's 3d6 for a company-sized game, plus the number of officers in your force. So, what orders am I going to give? I'm going to start off by uh, giving this remnant of a fire team here a couple of spotter orders. Basically, I'm going to give them a, an open fire order. But what they're going to do is they're going to try and uh, observe those two uh, surviving tanks down there at the end of that airfield. Now, they're tanks that haven't fired, but they are in the open. So, there is a role to spot them. Let's see how we do here. We need a two out. So that's one success. I would tell you are definitely born again hard. All right, and now let's see if we get a second success. Hell, I may even allow you to serve as a rifleman in my beloved corps. Okay, we're not doing too bad so far. So those two tanks have now been observed. Uh, spoiler alert, by laser designators. And we'll come back to that later. Okay, so now for my next order. Um, I'm going to give this platoon leader here, that's going to be a second lieutenant and his little uh, platoon gunnery sergeant there. They're going to get up on the t roof of that building, and they're going to try to observe that T-55 during that uh, intersection. So first, the movement part of their order. It's usually five inches in battle group for infantry movement. Now, that tank is in the open, but if you remember from part one of this episode, he failed to spot. So he technically hasn't fired yet. So he's a vehicle in the open that hasn't fired. Between all the smoke and dust and everything else going on, there's a slim chance that Lieutenant might not see him, but... Okay, he did see him with a, with a uh, successful roll there. He only needed a two-up, but there was a chance. Fog of war, mass confusion, he may have not spotted him. Alright, now I'm going to go to this fire team that's already in place. I'm going to try to also put a laser designator on that uh, Shilka down there. And that Shilka is a vehicle that has fired. But as you can see, there's plenty of intervening, you know, 
uh, smoke and dust and vehicles and wrecks and all other kinds of garbage in the way. Again, two plus the spot. Oh, he made it easy with a six. Hurrah! Awesome, cool. So now we have one, two, three, and four tanks all spotted. Spoilers with laser designators. <laughs> okay, here is the Marine artillery card. Yeah, I'm tired of taking all these casualties, guys. I'm going to go ahead and bite the bullet on collateral damage. That's that uh, each mission requires a battle rating counter draw. And, uh, you know, put down some of these Iraqis that are causing casualties. So, my mission is times two 155mm guns. Those are M777s. And each gun fires two rounds on an open fire order. So, I'm going to get a grand total of four impacts. So, I'm going to get my money's worth uh, out of that BRC draw. At least, I hope so. All four of those impacts are going to be armor-piercing copperheads. So, modern artillery can actually call in a shell, and then mid-flight, the shell kind of falls away, and an anti-tank missile is in there. And it comes down here, and it hits one of these four laser-designated targets. Those are the four targets I was making earlier in my uh, earlier in my turn. So, the first thing I have to do is I have to make a priority check, then I have to make a communications check. So, priority check is to make sure that uh, headquarters, you know, approves the uh, approves the mission, and then I have to uh, make the communications check to call in the proper coordinates. Now I do have a communications team in my list, so what that means is that um, if either one of these two three-up rolls fails, I get to re-roll it once a turn. So first, I'm going to go ahead and make my priority check. Headquarters. Headquarters doesn't give a shit. Headquarters doesn't care. I re-roll, I beg and plead over the radio, they say, okay, we're going to give you that fire mission. Thank you, communications team. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my comms test. Now I've already used my re-roll, so I've got to make this one. Three up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, please! Oh, barely. Okay, so I barely made that communication check. Again, I already used my re-roll. That communication scene one gives you one re-roll. But now I've got them both. Two three-up results, so that's four copperheads coming in hot. Okay, first let's get the bad news out of the way and draw the battle rating counter that is required by scenario rules uh, for my artillery barrage. And I wind up getting a, ooh, check it out, a confusion counter. Okay, good deal. Alright, so um, that's a special event in the counter mix. Normally it's a number that gets applied against my battle rating limit, but now it's a special effect I get to play against the enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and hedge my bets and play it against that T-55 there, because he scares me. If my copperhead misses, and he puts a 100mm shell into my marine infantry, that's going to be literally game over. And I, yeah, that, that can't happen. So if my copperhead misses, that confusion counter will force that T-55 to take a unit morale test. Maybe he'll be confused, he'll get pinned down, he'll lose a turn. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So I've gone ahead and drawn the battle rating counter, again, required by my artillery mission. And um, not only did it not cost me any points toward my Marine Corps battle rating limit, but it's, it could have a detrimental effect on the enemy. So, yeah, I'm not going to lie here. The Marines just got damn lucky on that one. Let me see your war face! Ah! Copperheads coming down. Okay, we've made our observation checks. We've made our priority check. We've made our communications check. We've taken our battle rating counter. We've gone through all the process. Now it's time to actually start blowing up some tanks. So let's see if that T-55 gets hit with the first copperhead. Here we go. Boom! Positive impact with high order detonation. Have a nice day. Heading over to the Shilka. Let's see if we hit the Shilka. Bang! Alright, a second hit. Hell, I may even allow you to serve as a rifleman in my beloved corps. Okay, that's awesome. Now down here, these two T-55s trying to cross the runway. Let's see if we can hit them. Uh, the first one coming up. Okay, that is a hit, barely, and that's a miss. You did that on purpose! You want to be different! Okay, well, I guess three out of four isn't bad. Um, can't complain about that. Alright, now let's go ahead and start to do some penetrations. Um, Copperhead versus uh, the flank armor of a vehicle is not going to be too tough. Um, even against the tanks, it's not going to be too hard. I think I have to roll like a four or a five up to penetrate some of these vehicles. Against the Shilka, it's a joke, I'm not going to lie. Um, down, down here on this tank. Again, it's going to be 12 versus an I. That's the flank armor of a uh, T-55. Uh, boom, I think, maybe? All right, so a penetration result of four against the side armor of a T-55 may actually be survivable. He may have actually survived that copperhead impact. 
So I'm going to compare the uh, armor piercing value of my copperhead versus the side armor of my T-55. Or really my rear armor, but they're the same value. Um, because copperheads, of course, strike from above. So I'm comparing um, a 12 against an I. So I find a 12 penetration row, I compare it against the I column, and I come up with a 3. Okay, that 4 result is a kill, but barely. Outstanding! All right, so let's go ahead and smoke these kills. Boom! Nice knowing you, buddy. Now, notice the uh, commander there, my little homeboy, riding around in his cupola. That's a commander lost, and that's going to affect Iraqi order dice next turn. Goodbye, Mr. Shulka. Thank you for playing. We have these wonderful parting prizes for you on your way out the door. Here's another smoked T-55. And then over here, we have the world's luckiest T-55. Somehow, his copperhead missed him and blew a nice big crater in that runway right next to his tracks. Other than that, not a bad little fire phase, I'm not going to lie. Okay, that's going to be three Iraqi battle raid encounters applied against their battle raiding limit, and uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, a three, a two, and a mind strike. All right, the Iraqis catch a break for a change. All right, so first of all, we're going to go ahead and add that three and a two to the um, damage applied against the Iraqi battle rating limit. That's going to, you know, bring them to a breaking point faster in the game. However, this mind strike gets played against a marine unit. So, where am I going to put this? So here are the rules for mind strikes. You play it against an enemy vehicle, you roll a d6, and apply the result indicated here on this little table. One of your own vehicles could have run over a mine. You can damage a vehicle, or you can blow the enemy vehicle up out of hand. The Iraqis have played it against that second Marine M60, and... Boom! Oh wow, the Iraqis finally got lucky for a change. Alright, that second Marine M60 just ran over a little uh, fruit basket from Saddam Hussein, and uh, yeah, he's out of gas. So this is what the Marines get for drawing that confusion counter before. Oh well. Uh, now the Marines have to draw another battle rating counter, because I did lose another unit. Maybe I'll get another beyond the call of duty. Oh, no such luck. Oh man, four. That one kind of sucked. Uh, no more lucky breaks for the Marines. Then again, it was a full tank knocked out of the battle. Alright, so there went six Marine Corps orders, but it was worth it, because I really had to shut down some of the armor that was building up uh, heavy, heavy threats against both Marine flanks there. So, now for the rest of my orders. Alright, this guy took a double action, this guy took a double action, he's kind of stuck here. That guy took an observe action, he's got one action left. Now I can't shoot at these, uh, the Sagger team crossing the runway there, because they've actually surrendered. And they're actually advancing towards me. I would love to be able to put some fire down on those active Sagger teams, but notice there are surrendering Iraqis in the way. I cannot shoot through, per scenario rules, I cannot shoot through Iraqis that are surrendering. That's going to cause them to not surrender. So with a second action on this fire team, uh, it sounds like a weird decision, but I'm going to go ahead and actually pull them back behind the building where they are truly out of enemy line of sight. Because the Iraqis have five operational BTR-60s all in a little row here, and each one carries not only a 7.62mm uh, PKT machine gun, but also a 60 caliber 14.5mm heavy machine gun. It's practically an auto cannon. So three plus four dice per vehicle. They all started their turn here, so they can all get an open fire, double fire order. That's going to be five times two times seven. There could be 70 dice of small arms fire coming back at the Marines in that building on um, the Iraqi turn. So I got to get as many Marines as possible out of the way of that and also shut down those BTRs as best I can. Um, that's pretty much going to be the rest of my turn. So how do I do that? Right, I'm going to start over here uh, with my tanks. Now that, that second tank back there, he's not doing anything. He ran over a tank in a bad way. He blew out his engine. He's not doing anything. This guy's immobilized. He's never going to move again until the recovery vehicle comes to tow him out of there. But he can still fire. So, he's going to go ahead and take an open fire order on some of these BTRs down here. Now, they're all vehicles in the open who have fired, so spotting is automatic. Okay, measuring the range from that M60 battle tank down the runway toward that BTR-60 looks like just under 20 inches. So, no modifiers for the target vehicle moving or the shooting vehicle moving. Two chances on open fire order and a three up. 
Okay, there's the first one missed. Did your parents have any children that live? And the second one did hit. You are definitely born again hard. So we'll say that he missed the first one and scored a hit on the second one. Uh, side armor on a BTR versus a 105. Yeah, never mind. Okay, that's not great, but it's a start. So the Marines on my left wing over here are in a bit of a spot, I'm not gonna lie. I think there's a way out of it, and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through my plan, but I've sort of had to chest my way through it like four moves in advance. Let's see how it goes. So here's my plan. That team has two actions. He's gonna use, an, he's gonna take an observation check against that BTR-60 back there. Now he's an AFE, that's fired, he's in the open. Observation is automatic. It still costs an action, but it's automatic. So I'm going to designate him as the aiming point for an incoming 120mm mortar barrage. Second action on those two Sagger teams that are hiding back there. Your infantry concealed that has fired, so I need a 3-up on a D6 and a fail. Private Power, what are you trying to do to my beloved core? Alrighty, so no worries. Second team is going to, I have to spot those Saggers. Trust me, I'll explain why later. He's going to go ahead and observe. And again, I need a 3-up. Okay, I made it that time. Outstanding! Alrighty, so I'm going to designate uh, that as my aiming point specifically. It's, a, it's any point you can see, it doesn't actually have to be a unit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and call it my mortars. Ooh, and the first one lands as a six! Okay, so, um, again, for people who may have been watching some of our previous videos, uh, we do have a slightly different table that we use for our artillery and battle group. Again, artillery is a little bit more advanced. Uh, in the 1990s, even mortars. Um, okay, so that's the mortar car that doesn't have the actual uh, artillery table on it. Okay, there it is. Sorry. So a six uh, on my unofficial battle group table uh, means that it lands right on. So that shell has literally struck the roof of that BTR. Now I'm going to see how that artillery, uh, how, how that uh, mortar mission landed. Another six! Holy crap, dude, my mortars are on fire today. That's another barrage right down the pickle barrel. Private Pie, you are definitely born again hard. Time to resolve the 120mm mortar hit on the roof of that BTR. The first thing I do is I find the armor penetration value of the 120mm mortar. That's not a sentence you get to say very often. But that 3 gets applied against an armor of O. That's the roof armor on the BTR. So 3 versus an O. Looks like I need a 6 up to damage the armor on a BTR-60. So let's see what I got. What y'all know about seven? All right, so a six would have been a tie that immobilizes the vehicle. The seven is the minimum number required to kill the vehicle. Boom, there she goes. My second mortar barrage also landed right where it was supposed to, thanks to a lucky die roll. So now I'm gonna roll two dice to see whether these are pinning barrages or killing barrages. Area fire or aim fire. So, it's one gun, open fire order, fires twice, I get two dice. That one is a clean whiff. That six on your land is a killing barrage. So, um, heading over here to the mortar card, we look up the actual HE damage on 120 mm mortar. It's six dice at four up. So, this is not going to be a pinning attack, this is actually going to kill people and remove figures off the table. Spoiler alert, we were kind of doing this wrong in previous episodes. Um, so it's the 4-up, I don't get a very good roll there. Uh, I only got two hits. Those Iraqis will get cover saves because they're hiding under tanks. We'll call it 4-ups for hard cover. One of them succeeded, so only one figure was knocked out. We'll have it be that assistant back there. Yeah, that's not good news. Both of those saggers are still operational. And the reason that's bad news is because what I was trying to do was to have my third and last M60 battle tank peek around the corner there and take another shot on another one of these BTR-60s that's about to completely blow my left wing off. But with those two saggers there, that may not be a good move. Time to improvise, overcome, and adapt. So that Marine Fire Team that uh, called in that second fire mission is going to go ahead and use his second action to put down some old school rifle fire and machine gun fire on those saggers across the runway. Alright, so he's about 20 inches away, that gives him a 3-up. Let's bump that to a 4-up because those saggers do have, uh, they are obscured, they're under some cover. That's going to give us a 4-up, uh, a but a lot of dice. Out of bad roll, too. Out of bad roll. That's that Motivate Marine uh, marksmanship training right there. Again, automatic weapons. M249 saw, that's the reason we're throwing so many dice. And I think I do miss a hit there, but no worries. Six hits, cover saves, because the Iraqis are hiding under tanks, we're going to give them hard to cover. 
ups, four ups. So they missed three of the saves, that's going to be three kills. That's the squad leader down, that's the other assistant down, and now I have no choice. I have to knock out one of the saggers, and that last sagger is going to be out of gas because of the last man standing. So cool, we shut down those saggers after all. With those saggers knocked out of action, it's now relatively safe for me to move forward with my last fully operational M60 battle tank. Just a little, staying well out of line of sight of that last T-55. I do not need that action coming out of my flank armor. I also have to watch out for this rogue bio team of Iraqi infantry sneaking around the corner here. So yeah, keep an eye on those jokers. Now I did move, so I only get one shot. I'm going to use it against those BTR-60s way down there, threatening my Marines on that rooftop. There are vehicles in the open that have fired, observations automatic, now I just have to hit them and I gotta do it. I gotta save those Marines on that rooftop. And now, the shots. Alright, from my M60 against this BTR at a range of just over 30 inches. Not that guy. I got planes for his ass. So I'm going to go ahead and take a shot against this far away guy. I'm not going to lie, I need a pretty good roll at this range. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Penetration check. BTR-60 side on the M60. Come on. Yeah, but he is smoked. Hell, I may even allow you to serve as a rifleman in my beloved corps. The next part of my madcap plan here to save things on the left was to actually use these two marine fire teams to launch a close assault or a grenade attack against that BTR-60. I'm just close enough to do it, but even if I succeeded, I'd be taking all kinds of flanking fire from that other BTR and the infantry behind him. So bad idea. Uh, also, looking here on the anti-tank grenade chart, yeah, you know, the odds they they just aren't that good. So I'm going to go ahead and not do that. Um, what I'm going to do instead with these two fire teams is it's it's a shitty thing to do, but they're going to pull back. Um, they're kind of kind of abandoned their comrades up there on that rooftop. I've done everything I can to save those two marine units on that rooftop, but. I would wind up just throwing away more casualties, trying to save casualties I'm going to wind up taking anyway. Um, there's going to be two BTRs and some infantry shooting at those guys. Uh, now, the good news is, even as these guys do regrettably withdraw, there is a Cobra that just might be able to put down enough fire to just maybe save the day. Okay, Mr. Super Cobra, it is time to be the hero. I'm going to move him over here so we can engage both of those BTRs at less than 10 inches with his 20mm auto cannon. Problem is, once he moves, he draws an SA-7 surface-to-air missile from that man-pads gunner over there. So, let's get lucky one more time. Um, as we can see, the SA-7 guy needs a 6-up on 2d6 to score a hit. However, the Cobra does get to add 3 to that target number because of his countermeasures. So, in the end, we're looking at a 9-up on 2d6. Okay, awesome. Whew. I got lucky again. Alright, the uh, SA-7 has missed the Cobra. Now the Cobra is free to engage the two BTRs. Shoot at the first guy. I need a 2-up, and I still managed to miss. 2-up on the second guy. Alright, that was a hit. Alright, now do I penetrate the armor on that uh, BTR-60? Um, barely. I needed a 6, I get side armor, and I did just get... Did I pin down that first BTR? Sadly, I did not. So, all right, first thing we're going to do is smoke the BTR that was destroyed. We're getting closer. Um, draw a battle rating counter here for the destroyed BTR. It's two more points against the uh, Iraqi limit. I would have really liked to either have killed or pinned down that BTR-60, but no dice. Wrapping things up over here on the Marine right wing. I'm going to take this anti-tank squad. It's two fire teams. Fire team one is going to engage those two Iraqi infantry that you probably can't see behind those palm trees. The Dragons are going to move up, and then hopefully put two Dragon Missiles into that T-55. So first, the, the rifle fire from my first fire team, roll to observe. Okay, that was no problem. I'm going to go ahead and build their fire pool. There's no saw in this group, so it's going to be a little bit smaller than uh, some of the other fire pools I've been throwing. But four M16s do score three hits. Four hits! Because uh, they are so close and the Iraqi separated them. Awesome, so it's going to be four saves for the Iraqis. And, oh, they still get two saves. But that's still two hits against them. So, that's, you know, there's only two figures in that unit. That eliminates that. 
All right, now I'm going to go ahead and move forward with my anti-tank gunners and hopefully put some dragons into that T-55. And here's where I realize that that wrecked T-55 is blocking my line of sight. Damn it. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to instead put those dragons in Overwatch just in case that T-55 over there decides to get Q uh, during the Iraqi turn. At the end of the Marine turn, no matter what, I have to draw another battle rating counter to reflect for the time crunch that I'm under to accomplish the mission. Uh, looks like I got a 1 though, so apparently the Colonel is starting to get off my back a little bit. Nevertheless, looks like we're, uh, we're at 23 out of 25. Private Kyle has dishonored himself and dishonored the platoon! Over to the Iraqi turn. So I roll their order dice. That's 3d6 for a company game, plus 3 for the number of officers they have left. If only they had that many units left uh, to receive orders. But whatever. They do have a BTR, unfortunately, that's going to open fire on my Marines. Now those Marines have never fired. They've only observed out of that building. So infantry that's obscured that hasn't fired, the Iraqis will need a 4-up to make an observation check. Open fire order, he gets two chances, he misses the first one. Sweet. Second try. Uh, okay, he made the second one. Alright, so there will be one fire phase coming at me. Uh, well, one's better than two, I guess. Alright, so it's four dice for the heavy 14.5mm machine gun, and three dice for the coax uh, 7.62. So that's going to be seven dice total coming at me. That's not so hot. So here we go with seven incoming fire dice. Alright, the five and a six are definitely hit, but those threes might be misses. Let me check my chart here, and... Oh, damn it. Yeah, those threes are also hits. Okay, so that's uh, four total hits against my Marines. Um, however, the Marines are inside an intact concrete building. So, find the cover chart here. Alright, a concrete building with a roof. Eh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's a three up uh, for my cover saves. So here we go with a uh, with my four dice. I'm going to go ahead and roll four dice on a three up. Oh, cool. I get three successes. Um, it's not really enough to help me, though, to be honest. Because that's still one casualty. Down goes Gunny. And my lieutenant there, my platoon leader, still gets eliminated per the last main standing rule. And that's going to be another battle rate encounter draw. Hope for a special event. Hope for a special event. Special event. Special event, please. Oh. I get a 1, which is almost as good, um, that will be added to my battle rating limit here, but, oh man, 24 out of 25! We're not quite out of the woods yet, there's some more Iraqi infantry that are going to take a double fire order, does not observe on the first one, and does not observe on the second one. Okay, we're, we're almost there, folks. This last Iraqi platoon command group jumps over the wall, is going to try to observe and fire against the remnants of the Marine fire team on the roof. So he needs a 4-up to observe, and he fails. Okay, the Marines have dodged several bullets there. An Iraqi tank tries to round the Marine right wing. There is an anti-tank team there in Overwatch. Alright, so both missiles have hit. I needed a 2-up to hit with those. First penetration fails. Second penetration makes it. Alright, so that is the last Iraqi tank smoked and the Marine right stabilized. The Iraqis, they're going all in. They just have to make the Marines draw one more battle rate encounter. So a desperate anti-tank grenade attack against that M60. Holy crap, they actually made it. Okay, so now they get a strength 6 attack against the Marines' side armor, which is an eye. We check the chart, they need a 9 up on 2d6. They came that close. Now to the Iraqi surrender phase. We have three units that might still surrender. One, two, and three. Well, 1d6 for each. A six indicates a surrender. Two units have just surrendered. And that will officially do it for the Iraqi player, who now stand at 66 against their battle rating limit of 65. While the Marines are holding, barely, at 24 against their limit of 25. So the Marines have scraped by on another one, guys. I'm not going to lie. That, uh, that one was a knuckle buster. That one came down... <laughs> came down to the wire. But uh, that's going to wrap us up for today. This is Ariskany Jim for the Sit Rep Podcast channel. Thanks very much for all of your support as always. Stay tuned for more great content going forward and we'll see everybody very soon.